the world has a deep dependence on refrigeration and cooling. But over time, some of the chemical compounds used in refrigeration and air conditioning were eventually determined to be harmful to the ozone layer of the atmosphere. As a result, most of the developed world has phased out these compounds. But eliminating the HFCs and HCFCs that still exist in older equipment reaching end of life presents a challenge. Traditional destruction methods typically use fossil fuel-based incineration, but since that is a relatively low energy, low heat solution, the destruction efficiency is lower and it can create products of incomplete combustion. This process can also emit higher levels of air pollutants, such as nitrogen oxide or sulfur dioxide, as well as other dioxins, furans, and particulate matter. But there is an alternative. Introducing SPARK, Steam Plasma Refrigerant Cracking Technology, from Pyrogenesis. Compared to traditional incineration-based processes, the clean electricity-driven SPARK offers much higher and more efficient chemical destruction of 6N level, meaning 99.9999% removal efficiency, a physical footprint that is one-tenth the size and up to 100 times less off-gas due to significantly lower air requirements. A comparison of the two approaches shows the plasma steam solution has dramatically lower CO2 release. The SPARK system is a highly effective patented process for the complete destruction of ozone-depleting substances and other environmentally noxious refrigerants and chemicals. Originally developed with the support of the governments of Canada and Quebec, the SPARK system has been perfected over 20 years of research and development by one of the largest collections of plasma experts in the world under one roof. Evolving from a technology platform originally developed by the company for the U.S. military, SPARK was designed to bring a military-grade solution to chemical waste destruction. SPARK uses a unique three-step process that treats synthetic refrigerants by passing them through three mechanical zones. A plasma torch that provides the ultra-high temperature energy blast that initiates the breakdown of the refrigerants. A reactor, the vessel where the process for the destruction occurs and a multi-part step that cleans and purifies the off-gas resulting from the previous two steps. Step 1. The Plasma Torch Plasma is electrically charged particles within superheated gas, the biggest example being the sun. The gas itself can be one of several types, including the steam that is key to spark. Pyrogenesis, the company behind Spark, is a world leader in ultra-high temperature industrial applications, often utilizing plasma to solve some of the most pressing environmental, engineering, and energy problems, especially in areas where lowering carbon output and reducing greenhouse gas emissions is a goal. While plasma has been used industrially since the 1950s, over the course of a few decades, the use of plasma has evolved to incredible new heights, especially in waste destruction. For example, pyrogenesis waste destruction systems are being installed on some U.S. Navy ships, including the recently launched USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier, at $13 billion, the largest and most technologically advanced ship ever built. Key to all of these efforts is the fact that industrial plasma can be just as hot as the surface of the sun, up to 5,000 degrees Celsius, and that's important because it's at those temperatures where the unique impact of plasma can take hold. Plasma has many uses. It can be a source of heat, it can purify, it can reduce combined elements back to their original forms, it can alter the state of a material, and it can destroy. For the spark system, an air plasma torch will superheat water and steam, ionizing the mixture to a heightened energy state and creating a powerful blast of electrically charged molecules. This energy creates the highly reactive conditions that will facilitate the complete destruction of the synthetic refrigerants as it moves to step two. Step two, the reactor. The reactor is a vertical steel shell lined with a refractory material that is resistant to intense heat, pressure, and chemicals, and is held under vacuum at 1300 degrees Celsius. After the plasma torch ionizes the water and steam, the energized molecules enter the reactor 
and meet with a flow of synthetic refrigerants being fed into the reactor. The subsequent reaction that occurs is called steam plasma hydrolysis. During this reaction, under the intense heat of the plasma energy, the refrigerant chemicals are destroyed as they are reduced to gas or gasified into their smallest components such as carbon monoxide, hydrogen fluoride, and hydrogen chloride. The carbon monoxide is then fully oxidized by the introduction of air, converting it to carbon dioxide. Moving to the bottom of the reactor, the hot gas mixture is rapidly quenched with a spray of fresh water to reduce the temperature of the gases to below 200 degrees Celsius to completely prevent the formation of dioxins and furans. The gas has now reached the bottom outlet of the reactor towards step three. Step three, off-gas cleaning. The off-gas cleaning process receives the now acid-based gases resulting from the plasma hydrolysis of the CFCs, HFCs, and HCFCs and neutralizes any potential toxicity within scrubbing tanks, columns, and filters. The now cooled acid gases are further cooled and cleaned through a downward shower of neutralized process water that contains a soda material caustic to acid. This results in the formation of salts such as sodium fluoride and sodium chloride which are soluble in the water tank. The process water containing the salts is gradually discharged and sent to the water treatment system or storage tank for final processing. Finally, the cleaned gas is reheated to avoid any condensation before passing through activated carbon and HEPA filters to remove any remaining presence of dioxins, furans, or particulates. The three-step spark process is now complete. The hazardous refrigerants are destroyed, and the fully cleaned gas is then safely released back into the atmosphere.